right after issuing a very serious warning about this border invasion under President Joe Biden, okay? Now, according to Donald Trump, Biden's policies on illegal immigration will cause Social Security and Medicare to collapse. His exact words, one of the most important issues in this race is how Biden's border invasion is going to be, uh, it's going to obliterate Medicare and Social Security for American seniors. Now, Fox News host Jesse Waters, he also explained it. Even though the Biden administration is bragging about an economic boom and a roaring jobs market, the reality is that it's more of a boom for illegal immigrants. Now, Waters, he even called it a migrant job fair. He quoted Fed Chair Jerome Powell to prove just how actually like a million less American citizens are working today than there were back in 2020. So we're actually worse off. Now, if you guys are able to see and hear me okay today on this live, definitely hit me up in the in, in the comments, hit the like button, share this video. And by you guys hitting the like button, it definitely helps uh, YouTube to know that this is a video that needs to be shared um, to get more eyeball, eyeballs on this situation here. Now, uh, also, I just want to thank you guys for sharing these videos on Facebook and Twitter. Um, and I, I got this like slight headache on my left eye. You ever get those one of those headaches that just won't go away? Uh, I'm, I, I'm trying not to take anything for it, but I also couldn't sleep. So I figured, okay, let me get on here and do a live with you guys. Who's in here? We got Fed Up Patriot, Keenan Ripen, Lady uh, Shalice, the... The one MR, what is going on, everyone? So one more surprising proof that the economy isn't booming or as booming as they, as they claim it to be. Check this out, guys. Pawn shops. These pawn shops are running out of space for their items. That's not a good sign because that means that people are selling a lot of stuff. Are you guys seeing anything like that? See anything like this in your area? Like where uh, maybe the economy isn't doing quite as well uh, as the media tries to sell us the idea that it is anyway texas pawn shop uh clay baron he explained that right now they have a glut of inventory uh which basically tells us that their clientele doesn't necessarily have any money um and they're accumulating pawn shop inventory what this means is that there's fewer buyers than there are sellers and this is a sign that you know for the lowest income americans times remain tough now I did a, uh, I had a question for you guys a couple videos back, and a lot of you guys responded. Uh, maybe you guys can chime in here uh, that there's a lot of people who are actually somehow surviving on a thousand dollars per month in income or less. Now, does that resonate with anyone here? Um, anyway, so Americans uh, are at least a, <clears throat> a certain demographic of Americans are finding that it is tough. Um, Kirk Bell agrees that time is tough. We got John from Thailand in the house. Wow. Uh, hello from Wisconsin. What's going on, uh, Nana Anna? Uh, we've got uh, Bet on Black. Wow. Uh, Creaky Drew from Australia. I love it. What's going on, Barbara? Okay. So um, I think it's no wonder, you know, in times like this, it's no wonder uh, former President Donald Trump is leading President Joe Biden in six key swing states and preparing for the big win come this November. Now, concerns about Biden's job performance and his handling of the economy, they're just fueling voter dissatisfaction and they're giving Donald Trump the edge here. And so the poll, this this poll actually shows Donald Trump leading Biden in Arizona by five points. Georgia, he's leading by one point. Michigan by three points. North Carolina by six points. Nevada by four points and Pennsylvania by three points when voters were asked to choose between the two candidates. Now, first, let's go ahead and check out this breakdown from Fox News host Jesse Waters, who uh, basically he shows the real truth behind Bidenomics or Bidenomics benefiting illegal aliens, illegal immigrants more than Americans and ultimately will end up stealing our Social Security that we paid for. America's comeback is building the future of American possibilities, building an economy from the middle out and the bottom up, not the top down. But something doesn't smell right. If there's a comeback, why doesn't anyone feel it? If the jobs numbers are as good as they say they are, why isn't this the roaring 20s? 
The economy, always an important factor. Well, this is a trouble sign for the Biden campaign because across the seven states in this Wall Street Journal poll, only 36 percent say that the strength of the economy is excellent or good. Sixty three percent, nearly two thirds of Americans in these seven decisive states say not so good or poor. The American people have a better sense of economics than economists. True. Because the American people smell a rat. And here it is. The Biden economic boom has never been a boom for Americans. It's been a boom for foreigners. The only reason we're not in a recession is because foreign-born workers are taking our jobs. Yesterday, the chair of the Federal Reserve said so himself. We've needed more people. Immigration moved up quite a bit over the last two years. And this is uh, uh, typically the, the Census Bureau does all this estimating. The Congressional Budget Office actually went and took a different path and talked to uh, border, the people who work at the border and that kind of thing and got a much higher estimate. The numbers are actually higher. And that actually... This is actually Fed Chair Jerome Powell speaking on this situation here. ...explains what, you know, what we've been asking ourselves, which is how, how can the economy have grown over 3% in a year where almost every outside economist was forecasting a recession. An overwhelming majority anyway were forecasting a recession for 2023. The Fed Wow. So Joe, uh, uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell is basically trying to say that the reason why we didn't get the recession we were expecting that many economists were predicting is because of uh, the uh, number of illegal migrants that are working in our economy. What do you guys make of that? Jesse Waters is calling Bidenomics uh, basically a migrant job fair. Um, and also later in that same show, he sh he um, you know he allowed basically it was kind of like a recap of Fed Chair Jerome Powell explaining how the job market uh, is is performing right now. And Waters later broke it down to reveal that. There's actually a million less American citizens that are working today than there were back in 2020. And, you know, as the U.S. economy kind of reopened after the pandemic, Biden has created like five million migrant jobs, not American jobs, five million migrant jobs. Now, as Jesse Waters put it, and, and let me know if that makes you guys happy. Like, I'm not I, I, I'm, I'm totally again. I'm totally for prosperity for, of, of everyone, but not at the expense of. Americans, right? But let me know. Let me know if that. Uh, let me know what you guys think about that. Um, should we be focusing on getting jobs for Americans or getting jobs for uh, everyone else? So, anyway, uh, Jesse Waters basically says that illegal uh, illegal immigrants walk across the border. Biden buses them to New York, Chicago, you know, wherever else, and after like 150 days, they're allowed to work. And he also talked about how the Biden economy is a mirage. It's a migrant mirage. All of these jobs that Biden has claimed to have created, millions of them are part time jobs. And since June, America has lost like two million full time jobs. And so this is why he's calling the so-called Biden comeback basically a scandal. And so instead, Waters is arguing that the president is illegally flooding American industries with cheap labor. Now, if there's cheap labor, that means that, you know, American jobs are going to be paying less and less and less. That's not winning for the average working American, right? Less native born Americans are working and millions of us are having to take second and part time jobs. Uh, let me know if this resonates with anybody. So this is ultimately here's a long term picture, guys. If you haven't if you're not picking up on this, if you're not seeing it already, you will see it. Um, this is pushes our wages down and at the same time it triggers inflation i mean think about it you know um illegal immigrants will not typically have the expenses that um that americans are going to have you know uh, they may not they typically will not own homes um the, the level of expense so in other words if their expenses are way lower then they can accept the lower wage and be fine with it so then he goes on to say how the media already knows this, but they don't care who does the work and they also don't care about who loses out. So the bottom line is they just 
They just want to be served by someone, anybody, as cheaply and as quickly as, as possible. So what do you guys think about this, right? So that's why former President Donald Trump issued a very serious warning about how Biden's policies on illegal immigration will cause Social Security and Medicare to collapse. All right. Keenan Ripon, welcome to the channel. My man. I love uh, seeing uh, seeing my members uh, join the channel. So anyway, uh, just a quick shout out to Keenan. So uh, basically what we're seeing here, and I think we've been seeing this for a while, right? Uh, this this looming collapse of Social Security. Um, but speaking at a campaign rally in Green Bay, uh, Wisconsin recently, our former president, Donald Trump, he talked about how Biden's been basically handling this very concerning situation on the southern border. So he was saying that one of the most important issues is this race, um, you know, and, and how Biden's uh, border invasion is going to obliterate Medicare and Social Security for American seniors. And this is alarming, guys. In fact, this happened in a packed hall of supporters ahead of the whole Wisconsin presidential primary where he ended up winning about, I think it was like 80 percent of the vote there. Um, but to these people, Donald Trump explained uh, that what Biden's doing by allowing 15 million, maybe 20 million people this year, destroying your social security, this is destroying our social security system, right? And he's also destroying your Medicare. And along with that, many other things, he's destroying your, your way of life, right? And so he also shared this speech on how Trump social, uh, excuse me, he also shared this speech on his Trump social media and he said that Biden's border invasion is actually going to obliterate Medicare and Social Security for American seniors. He predicted that, um, you know, if the millions of Biden migrants are allowed to stay as as Joe Biden intends, well, they're going to cost taxpayers trillions of dollars and Medicare and Social Security will inevitably buckle and collapse. So very concerning, guys. Richard Haley, thank you so much for the $1 super chat. I really appreciate your support, my friend. So a lot of people, they say that they're just sick and tired of Biden and they're sick and tired of what he and his people are doing to, to Trump and all Donald Trump's legal cases. What's going on with uh, Letitia James, Judge Arthur Ingeron up in the New York City civil fraud case. Then, of course, you've got the Georgia election interference case with Fannie Willis, uh, Nathan Wade and Judge uh, Arthur, excuse me, Judge uh, Scott McAfee. So a lot of people are not happy with uh, what with what Biden's doing and what he's able to influence. Let me know what you guys think on that, guys. What's going on, Catalia? We got R.I. We got uh, Raymond Burgos, Kevin Burke. Uh, Kevin Burke says we're looking at a depression. Jen Wish, what's going on, everyone? But yeah, so back to the matter at hand. Um, they haven't quite released the uh, that up to date official data on how many migrants have crossed into the United States this year. But the Center for Immigration Studies, which campaigns on low low immigration, um, they estimated that a, a recent study um, that the total foreign born population of the United States had risen by 6.4 million people since Biden took office in January 2021, and that 3.7 million of that increase was likely due to illegal immigration. How does that make you feel? I mean, so anyway, so migrant numbers crossing into the United States over the U.S.-Mexico border have increased dramatically in recent years. In February 2021, there were 101,099 encounters at least according to the data from the U.S. Customs and Border Protection. But in the same month in 2024, the latest month to be reported, there were 189,922 uh, enforcement encounters. So as for Social Security, though, the Social Security Administration or the SSA, they're facing this looming funding crisis that could ultimately see benefits automatically cut within the next decade. Reserves, <clears throat> Reserves that fund the SSA could run out within the next decade unless some major action is taken, right? Illegal immigrants are generally not eligible to collect. Now, check this out, guys. This is really interesting here. Uh, illegal immigrants are generally not ex eligible to, uh, to collect Social Security and Medicare benefits, with some exceptions to Social Security and disability benefits. Rosie Rosal, 
Um, let me let me let me try to re, let me try to pronounce this. Uh, Rose. I, I really hate ruining people's names. Uh, correct correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think it's Rose uh, Rousseau. Rosie Rousseau. Anyway, thank you so much for the five dollar super chat, and please let me know if I've uh, pronounced your name correctly in the chat. I I, I I hate to ruin people's names. Anyway, um, but what what we're seeing here though is with okay, so illegal immigrants don't have access to social security, and so Biden's argument is that illegal immigrants don't harm social security. So what is everybody worried about, right? But we're about to blow this myth out of the water. Um, and so with that being said, uh, interestingly enough, this report by the, uh, center for immigration studies, it actually found that illegal immigration actually does <clears throat> actually does benefit the social security system to some extent, as many will pay taxes without repaying or, or actually getting to reap the benefits. So if illegal immigrants get jobs here and pay taxes, they're paying into the social security system. So they're actually helping out from that respect, right? But that is only the tip of the iceberg and it gets a lot worse from there, right? So they explain that th these taxes, they function as like free contributions to these social security funds as long as the immigration or as long as the illegal uh, immigrants remain eligible for, for benefits, right? But see, many migrants are granted temporary work passes while they're living in the United States, but they but they cannot claim Social Security payments. Right. But they also said that although border crossings have surged to a, to record levels in this decade, um, the Biden administration's generous use of this parole power has granted temporary work permits to large numbers of migrants who will not be eligible for entitlement benefits when and if their parole expires. Now, in this case, when the number of illegal immigrants who contribute payroll taxes increases, so does their benefit to their Social Security and their Medicare trust funds, right? Now, when I told people this, they couldn't believe it. They say, how are more illegal migrants supposed to help Social Security, right? Like, it doesn't make any sense. And yeah, you know, reports like this often um, forget some other very important factors about the people that are coming in through our borders illegally. So just check this out. There's a testimony that actually came out from Stephen A. Uh, Camerata. He's the director of research over at the uh, Center, the Center of uh, Immigration Studies. He explains this, that immigration, uh, illegal immigrants are a net fiscal drain, meaning that they receive more in government services than they pay in, in taxes. So it's actually not helping us. So I don't know if Joe Biden thinks like, hey, let's leave the borders wide open, let all the illegal immigrants come in, and that is going to help our social security system. Like, it, it, it's actually making it worse. Um, okay, cool. Thank you so much, Rosie. I'm glad I was able to pronounce your last name properly. Um, so here's the deal. The result of illegal immigration here, it's ultimately a, a net fiscal drain, meaning that they're receiving more government services than they pay in taxes. So obviously this doesn't help. In fact, it makes things worse. It accelerates the problem. And so this result, it's not due to laziness. It's not due to fraud. Illegal immigrants actually have high rates of work. And they do actually pay some taxes, um, including income taxes and payroll taxes. But the fundamental reason that illegal immigrants are a net drain on the on our benefit system is that they have a low average education level. And I'm not trying to, you know, this is not me like taking a dig at illegal immigrants. Um, but I'm just saying like they have a low average education level, which leads, which ultimately results in low average earnings and tax payments. So with that being said, it also means that a large share of these of this group of people uh, qualify for welfare programs, often receiving benefits on behalf of their U.S. born uh, children. So while the illegal immigrant 
is not necessarily eligible for these benefits. Their children, if they're born here in the United States, they they are. So that's where a good part of this drain ends up coming from. And like they're less educated and uh, low income U.S. born counterparts, the tax payments of illegal immigrants, they don't come anywhere close to covering the costs that they create. So, yeah, there's definitely two sides to this argument. And this is why I highly recommend, you know, um, definitely subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the like button if you guys are feeling what I'm saying. If you like content like this, if you like being kept in the loop, um, let me jump in the comments to see what you guys are saying out here. Uh, wow, we got Vinny Cass from, from the Philippines. Um, we've got uh, <laughs> Gilbert Gilbert LeBay Jr. Um, I'm doing pretty good, man. Thank you for asking. How are you doing? Oh, man. Uh, let's see. So Keenan Ripon says Democrats need votes. Um, and so I guess this is why they're allowing so many illegal people to come into the country because they know that they will likely end up voting for Democrats. Um, yeah. So, I mean, we can't ignore the facts that, that are, you know, that are being presented to us. Now, here's another thing that's ringing some alarm bells for me in this economy here. Right. So this whole pawn shop situation. So as explained by this Texas pawn shop owner, uh, Clay Barron, right now they have a glut of inventory, which which tells him that their clientele doesn't necessarily have money. They're accumulating um, pawn shop inventory means that there's less buyers than there are sellers, meaning times are still tough for the lowest income Americans. Time, times are remaining tough for them. And President Joe Biden is putting a lot of effort into convincing us that the economy is getting better, uh, pointing out a bunch of positive signs. You know, inflation's cooling down, jobs and wages are on the rise, unemployment's dipping close to all time lows and the stock market is booming. Right. But seriously, ask anybody and most people will probably tell you how they're not actually feeling it in their day to day lives. Now, let me just get a quick show of hands here. Are you guys feeling like the economy is better today or worse today? Um, if you think the economy is better today, just say it's better. If you think the economy is worse today, just say it's worse. Just keep it simple. And just look in the comments and see what other people are saying about that. Um, now, the past two years, uh, we've been hit with high inflation, uh, basically hitting working families probably the hardest, especially those who live you know, from one paycheck to the next, um, paycheck to paycheck. And sure, you know, some people with retirement plans, 401ks, IRAs, uh, investment brokerage accounts um, and stocks, they might moan about inflation in the economy, but they're, they're probably managing to stay afloat because they have that they have a little bit of passive income and they're compounding their wealth through the stock market that is actually near the all time high. But there's a lot of other people who are barely getting by and they're living pawn to pawn. So let me see what you guys are saying. So uh, let's see. Glenn Campbell says it's worse. We're talking about the economy right now. Um, let's see. Lower. No, lower income has hit the hardest, uh, according to uh, man. These comments are flying in. Barbara Ware. Um, Juan, uh, Juan Vargas Jr. says it's getting worse. Uh, Joanne Diaz says worse. Cynthia Bernard, it's worse. Catalia says it's worse. Gary's, Gary Perota says uh, per Parada says it's not good. Uh, now, for those without a credit card or a bank account, pawn shops, they kind of serve as an emergency fund for folks financially, you know, from a personal finance standpoint. Now, uh, you got owners like Barron giving out loans backed by whatever you happen to pawn, and they're, they're going to keep your stuff safe while you try to scrape together the cash to be able to buy it back later in the future. But these loans, they usually only last like they make like, you know, one to three month loans. So, but with the, you know, these days lately, more people are pawning their valuables and they're never going back to even pick them up. So they're literally just kind of selling their stuff off. So what happens when they run out of stuff to sell, right? Uh, John Daz Dalzell, excuse me, John Dalzell says Bitcoin has saved his retirement. I'd love to hear your story about that. Um, how many of you guys 
two questions. How many of you guys invest in Bitcoin or own any kind of Bitcoin? If you own any Bitcoin, just say, you know, just type in Bitcoin. Um, and secondly, how many of you guys sell stuff at the pawn shops? If you ever sell, if you've ever sold anything or you're thinking of selling something in the pawn shop, just type in pawn shop. I'm just trying to see like where you guys are at. Uh, clearly, John uh, Dalzell invests in, in Bitcoin. He typed in BTC. Appreciate you. Uh, let's see. Robert says Bitcoin. Uh, Katalia, side hustle fan here. Um, yeah, I, I know Katalia does the uh, Etsy and the uh, print. I, I don't think it's Printify, but it's something like Printify. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so da John Dow says, is, da John Dow says, John Dalzell says never pawn. Um, let's see. Let's see. Rumple Stillskin's daughter says I invest in things that pay dividends. Nice. Um, all right. Tammy, Tammy Maselli says pawn shop. Okay. Printiful. Thank you. I couldn't, I, I never remember Printiful. I always think Printify, but I never think about Printiful. So anyway, um, Dana Cora says crypto. Okay. All right. So according to Laura um, Waselski, she's the spokesperson for the National Pawn Brokers Association. She says that pawn balances have risen across the country in the last two years. In fact, they're blaming uh, cost of living increases. You guys are likely seeing that just like I'm seeing it. Um, HOA fees are going up. Gas prices are going up. Food prices are going up. Insurance, car insurance, homeowners insurance, property taxes. It's ridiculous. Your rent is likely going up. Um, so we're, we're just seeing a wide array of cost of living related expenses increasing. You know, you got the lack of access to credit for some folks with maybe not the best, maybe not the best credit, short term emergencies. The fact that 50, get this guys, 50%, this is unbelievable. 50% of American households do not have a thousand dollars in savings to cover these emergencies. And two of the largest publicly traded, um, pawn shops corporations in the United States, uh, which between them own roughly 1,700 pawn shops nationwide. They're also reporting growing inventory and an increased demand for short-term loans. Not a good sign. First Cash Holdings Incorporated, they operate about 1,200 pawn shops under the uh, First Cash and Cash America brands in 29 states. Um this particular company just recently reported record pawn receivables in its most recent year end earnings report and like a 10% increase in inventory in its stores. Then you got Easy Corp. They own about 305, they own about 530 uh, pawn shops in the United States. They reported an 8% increase in inventory in their US stores, according to their latest earnings report. And so according to the company, the challenging uh, the challenging macroeconomic backdrop continue to fuel demand for short-term cash loans, meaning people don't have the money. So let me tell you guys another thing that this challenging economy is, is how it's fueling Donald Trump's numbers at the polls, right? So basically, the worse the economy does, the better off Trump is, uh, at least statistically, that we're seeing in the polls. So the latest from a Wall Street Journal poll showed that Former President Donald Trump, he's leading President Joe Biden in six key swing states as concerns about Biden's job performance and his handling of the economy continues to piss off the voters and make make them vote for the competitor. So um, I guess if we can just keep on sticking out the crappy economy, it's actually helping Donald Trump. So if you're looking for change. You know, if you, we had the last three and a half years of Biden, if you're looking for change, I guess the worse the economy does for what the next six months, the higher the likelihood is that Donald Trump would win the election. I mean, because the economy is like one of the top reasons, uh, one of the top gripes that Americans are having right now with our, uh, you know, when it comes to like the number one issues that they want the new president to address. So uh, let me know if you guys think that Donald Trump can help fix our economy. Um, 
hit me up in the comments section. Let me know what you guys think on that. So we have, let's see here. Oh, wow. Uh, Kaka Grande 3000 says, I had to sell my, my backup vehicle. That's not a good sign. Um, I hope your primary vehicle is pretty reliable. Uh, nice. Danny Wilson says, good day, mate. <laughs> I'm assuming you're uh, Australian. Um, man, gas prices in Portland is $4.19 to $4.59. Man, gas is a lot more expensive in Portland, Oregon than where I live. Uh, we are, I think we're a little bit, uh, I don't even remember. I think we're a little bit under $3 per gallon for the cheap stuff, for the 87 octane unleaded gasoline. Um, but yeah, so um, let me see. Joseph Johnson says, I make $5,000 a month and literally only keep $700 in savings out of it. Well, honestly, Joseph, that's more than 10% of your income. So based on the fact that most of a lot of Americans are not even saving anything, I feel like you're already winning, my friend. Obviously, you can do better, and I know you can, so I want to motivate you to continue to do better, but just a little pat on the back that you're doing pretty good there. You're definitely above average, so that's definitely what's up. Uh, no, this is not financial advice. <laughs> Disclaimer, right? <clears throat> so Brian Peterson says, if DJT loses in November, we're totally screwed. What do you guys think? If Donald Trump loses the election, are we going to be totally screwed or not? Um, let's see. Who's your Grammy says... Trump 2024, our only hope. Man, that's a lot of pressure on one guy. It's a lot of pressure on one guy. Um, hopefully, you know, these corrupt uh, uh, um, district attorneys don't get Trump locked up before the election, right? You got Fannie Willis, you got uh, Letitia James, because granted, you know, I mean, the, Letitia James, she's not done. She is not done. I shared with you guys the fact that Donald Trump provided the... Um, the bond that was needed to cover his um, New York City civil fraud case, 350, actually $464 million bond, which, which was reduced to $175 million recently. Um, so Donald Trump provided that bond. Um, and here you got Letitia James losing her mind because she was so hell bent on, you know, seizing Donald Trump's assets in New York City. Now she's questioning the financial integrity of the bond company that Trump got the bond from. It's like, what is going on here? It's like, look, you know, <laughs> uh, you ask for all of this money. Then I provide you all, all of this money. Now you want to look under the light at each one of these bills to validate that each one's real. Then you see that each one of these $100 bills is real. But then you also said, well, you know, I see that you have the money. I see that these bills are, in fact, legitimate. But I want you to call the Federal Reserve, get them on the phone and have them confirm that this money's real. It's like, come on. Look, you lost, Letitia James. You lost. He paid the money and Donald Trump's going to appeal. He's going to have, you know, Alina Haba's going to appeal this thing. They're probably hopefully going to get a more reasonable uh, jury. Uh, an appeals court to reveal that New York civil fraud case that, you know, I know your favorite judge, uh, Judge Engeron presided over. I think they're going to have to, I think that they're going to have to overturn that thing. Uh, there's just too much evidence suggesting, proving that this was a targeted prosecution of Donald Trump. Period and point blank, and the three, the four hundred fifty four million dollar penalty is not based on anything. So, you know, I don't. It's it, you know, it's very clear in the beginning that Fannie Willis. I mean, not Fannie Willis. Um, Letitia James was campaigning on a lot of New Yorkers' hatred toward Donald Trump. So she campaigned on, hey, I'm going to get this guy. I'm going to sue this guy. It, it's obvious what they were doing. And then they went and found this, this judge that also didn't like Donald Trump. They would not let Alina Haba present so much relevant um, uh, evidence 
to, in the trial that would have helped them to win the trial. They also prevented a jury from weighing in on the Trump trial in New York City with Letitia James. So it was like, look, there was no win in that case. And, and I think Alina Hoppe said it a few times that they lost the case before they even walked in the courtroom. So anyway, I, I don't want to rant, rant on that for too long. But uh, but yeah, this is where we are, guys. I think Donald Trump is definitely preparing to win for he's preparing for a big win here. And, uh, you know, uh, presidential candidate incumbent Biden is looking like uh, his his social security stunt here with illegal immigrants is backfiring in his face and there's nothing he can do about it. In fact, this is actually perpetuating Donald Trump's win. So what do you guys think? If you haven't already, do hit the like button for the video. I totally appreciate you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. If you haven't already, share this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'm going to catch you on the next one. Y'all be safe.